Today, I want to talk about leaving your mark. I want to talk about leaving your mark. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 24. And again, the title of today's sermon is called Leaving Your Mark. Leaving Your Mark. If you found it in the Bible, let's read it together. If not, you can read it uh, through the, uh, the overhead screen. Let's read it all together in one voice. Let's begin. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Today I want to focus on the passage, verse 20, where he says, But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. You know, I read this on the internet uh, just a few weeks ago, that somehow a hacker, and they said they still haven't, I think, found this hacker, someone that invades other people's server, the computers. And the amazing thing about this story was that this individual, or maybe individuals, they broke into a government computer uh, that belongs to United States and Korea. Now, what's so amazing about this feat is that, number one, uh, the ability, you gotta be, you got to be pretty smart to break in, to have the ability to break into a national government website, uh, especially that belongs to South Korea and the United States. So the, uh, the deed in itself was not a small feat. Uh, it was uh, really, a, th this accomplishment was pretty big for them to do that. And the second thing that made this uh, newsworthy is the fact that what they did was a, is a big criminal offense. You're not breaking in or you're not hacking into someone's personal homepage or angst homepage or some you know, discount store's you know, you know, you know, website. You're breaking into the you know, United States of America, their government website, as well as Korean government's website. So this was not a small matter. It was a big news. But the question that, that came to my mind was this. Why in the world would anyone do this? Now, if someone was, were to hack into a, a bank uh, you know, server, then you know, it kind of makes sense because you see some benefit into breaking into a bank. You know, you, when you do that, you're breaking in and you're saying, okay, I'm going to steal some money. I need some money. Maybe if you're breaking into or hacking into someone else's homepage and you defame the homepage, you know, Maybe you break into Matthew's homepage and you put a mustache on his face and put a, like a, a horn on his head because maybe you don't like him. There are personal reasons. But why in the world would an individual break into a hack, into a government website? Something that is so difficult to do. Not only that, the penalty, where penalty is so great, where if you were to get caught, you can actually go to prison for doing this. Why in the world would this person do that? There's no financial benefit. There's nothing personal. Why? What would drive someone to do such a thing? This is probably the answer, and I probably have it right. And the answer is that most people, they cannot stand the idea that their lives are meaningless, that it doesn't make any difference whether or not they're born. There are people out there, they cannot stand the idea that their life is insignificant, that no one in this world cares and knows about them. And they cannot stand the thought of that. And because of it, what do they do? They do this thing. They want to leave their mark some way, somehow. even to the point of maybe even harming someone, even to the point of maybe even harming yourself, they're willing to go even that far to leave a mark just so that someone will know 
that they exist. That someone will know that their life meant something, whether it was good or bad. Whether we want to admit it or not, actually every one of us, we have that desire. Every one of us in this room, we have a desire to leave a mark. Why? The answer is simple. Bible tells us that we were all created in the image of God. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. Where it says, when God made us in his, in his likeness, in His image. The Bible is not talking about that, you know, God looks exactly like us. You know, we wish. <laughs> what the Bible is telling us is that in that likeness, it means that in the likeness of His personality, in the character, in the role that we have, we're very much similar to God. Just like God, we have ability to reason, to think, to love, to sacrifice, to give. These are the likeness that we have along with God. And the image of, of likeness that is talked about, uh, that is not mentioned here, but also is the likeness that we have in our longing and desire for eternity. You see, Bible tells us that God is eternal. God is eternal. He is forever. And because we have that likeness of God, we too long for the same thing, that who God is. Let me just put it in a very simple term. You know, we are a creature that eats. We are a creature that lives, basically, because we eat. And because of it, naturally, we long and we hunger for food. We have the same likeness as God. God is eternal. That is who He is. And because we have not yet achieved, attained uh, eternity, guess what? It is natural for us to seek after something that is eternal. Whether it's, it might be hard for you to digest, but the more you think about it, you will agree that it makes sense. Because we, don't, we, do not have achieve, we have not yet achieved eternity, we long for it. Every one of us long for it. And because of that, there are so many of us, there are many people who, are about, who will be willing to, who are willing to do just about anything to leave an eternal mark. A classic example, if you look at the Guinness Book of Record, do you know what that is? It is a book that records all the records. Uh, and it doesn't have to be anything really common or significant. I mean, any simple record. Let me just to give you an example. Within the Guinness Book of Record, there's a name of a person who can hold their breath the longest, longer than anyone else on earth. There's actually a record for someone, record of someone. Uh, there's a record of tallest person that exists in the Guinness Book of Record. There's, all, there's also a, a record for someone who, who have dribbled the ball the longest for days and days, 24 hours without sleeping. There's also a record for the longest kiss, someone that has kissed for the longest. I actually thought I held that record with faith, but no, I didn't even come close to that record. There's also a record for someone, the, num the, the, the largest, greatest amount of people that you can stuff in to a telephone booth in England of all places. I mean, they have all these records. And here's the sad thing. Number one, believe it or not, most of these records in the Guinness Book of Record will be broken. It has in the past, and, it, I, and I assume it will in the future. But the second thing that makes it really sad is that all the records that are in the Guinness Book of Record, nobody except for the individual themselves and maybe perhaps their close friends and family, nobody really cares about this record. All the records that I just mentioned to you, do you know who holds them? Within the past week, have you thought about those records? Within the past year, two years, five years, ten years, did you think about who holds this record? Again, the sad thing is, there are people out there that invest their time and energy, money, and they pour in so much of their passion into breaking this record, and yet it's a record that will more than likely be broken by someone else. And the sad thing is, it is a record that really, who cares? So why do they do them? 
you know, we think of this record as something that's, you know, oh, you know, maybe I should try. Trust me. Go into a website and click and click some of the uh, records that's on the Guinness Book of Record. Not anyone can do it. You got to be passionate about this, about breaking this record. You got to, you know, train yourself. You have to go through, you know, extreme amount of, you know, pain and, and endurance to achieve this. And why would anyone in their right mind go through such a thing to achieve this record that is so meaningless? Again, the answer is this. Because within every one of our hearts, we have an innate desire to leave our mark. Within every one of our hearts, we have a desire to be known, to be significant, to have meaning in our lives. You know, many of us, without knowing, in fact, many of us in here have tried to leave a mark. Some of us, we try to leave our mark in, in sports. You know, we often, we want to set the record, we, tr we strive, we want to have the best, you know, volleyball team record in, in the history of TCIS. You know, we want to. We don't think about it, but why? Why is it so important? Some of us, we want to leave a mark saying, you know, I want to have the highest scoring average. I want to score the most points. That's the same thing. We all have this desire to leave a mark. I remember when I was in college, they had a free throw contest. It was a festival, and they were having a free throw contest. And uh, the prize was, there was no prize. The prize was that you get, first place gets a trophy this high, I'm talking this high. Second place gets a trophy this high. And the third place person gets a trophy this high. Normally, I don't participate in those things because you have to pay to actually participate. And those of you that know me, I don't like to waste money. But on this particular occasion, I really wanted to try for various reasons. Number one, because actually I'm pretty good at shooting free throws. I'm better than Paul Yoon, you can ask him. Second reason is because there are a lot of my friends there. A lot of my friends were there during this festival and they were watching. And deep inside my heart, I wanted to leave my mark. I wanted people to remember. I wanted my friends to remember for the rest of their lives what an amazing free throw shooter that I am. So I paid $2 and you get to shoot free throws, I think uh, 10 times or 12 times, I forget. I paid $2 and I went and I shot my free throws. I only made seven out of 12. It wasn't good enough. But you know what? Because this was a festival and their objective is to make money, you can try it again. Me being such a frugal person, guess what? I did. I took out my wallet, I tried again. I think I made eight out of 12. That still wasn't good enough to finish among the top uh, finishers. I said, I'm gonna try again. Next time around, I made 10 out of 12. I came in second place. I got a nice second place trophy. Even till this day, that trophy is at my brother's house, collecting dust. Why would I do that? Because deep inside my heart, I had this longing and desire to leave my mark, to be made important, to be significant in someone's eye. Some of us, we even try, we also try to make, uh, leave our mark at our work. You know, some of us, I've known people whose goal in life was to be the highest paid worker, highest paid person in their company. Some say, you know what, I'm going to get promotion the fastest. I'm going to be the youngest person to be in this position. Some say, I want to be the youngest millionaire. I want to be the you know, first one in our family, in our whole Lee family to make a million dollars. What are we doing? We're trying to leave our mark. Some of us who try to leave our mark among our friends. We want to be known as sometimes the wildest guy, the craziest guy. So what do we do? We do all types of stunts. We try to, uh, try to be the, you know, the, the most fun, wild, exciting person among our friends because we want to leave our mark among our, uh, our peers. We, don't, we want to be the most popular guy. Some even try to make their mark in education. You know, we want to be the first Korean to make it to Harvard. We want to be one of the first ones to make it to Harvard. I can tell you for a fact that that's been a goal of, that is a goal of hundreds and thousands of Koreans living in this country. 
Some of us, we have a goal. Say, you know, I want to make the highest score, 1,600. I want to be the one of the first one in our family, in our school, to have the highest mark. But again, the question is why? What is the reason? What is the purpose behind it? Is it really that important to get 50, uh, 1,590? Is it really that important that you have to get 1,600? Is it really important that you have to be number one? You can't settle for number two? Is it really that important that you have to be the first one in your family to go to an Ivy League school? If you really think about it, it's not that important. It's only 10 points. It's not that important. Whether you're number one or number two, you'll probably end up at the same school. And whether you go to Harvard or whether you go to Rice or University of Texas, whatever, the, really the difference is not that big as far as your happiness is concerned. The why is it so many people strive so hard, go through so such length to achieve this mark? Because again, every one of us, inside of us, we have a desire to leave a mark, to be made significant, to know that our life meant something. Some of us, even in our own everyday lives, we want to leave a mark. So what do we do? We're even willing to risk our lives to climb the highest mountain. We're willing to spend thousands of dollars. We're willing to risk our lives. We're willing to suffer through the most horrific, horrific environment. Why? Because if we achieve it, we believe that we will leave a mark on this earth. Some of us, we risk our lives to jump off a building, jump, climb the tallest building on the outside. We scale them bare hand. Why? Just so that people, news crews will come in and film them. And they'll be on the 6 o'clock news. And they're hoping and desire that their life somehow will be, their mark will be left on earth. Because they appear on television. We've known people that crossed the ocean on a simple raft. We've known people that flew over the, you know, the ocean on a, you know, a, a, a handmade airplane. Why? Simply because they have this innate desire to leave, leave a mark. And even in the church, we see some people that want to leave their mark. They say, you know what? Before I would die, I want, to, I want to make sure my name is left. I want to be a founding member of this church. I want to make sure that my name and my picture are on the, on the wall of a church. Why? Again, because every one of us, we have that desire to leave a mark. What drives us to pursue something so meaningless with so much passion? It is because we want to be significant. But here's the sad truth. The sad truth is that when people can't, when people cannot leave their mark by doing something great, achieving something great, they resort to things that are harmful. Many of us, if we can't achieve, if we can't leave our marks through a great deed, then what do we do? Some of us, we actually turn to doing something that is harmful to leave a mark. That's what I mean by every one of us, we have this great desire to leave a mark. Now, unless you're someone that's barely surviving and you're, 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 you don't even know what you're going to be eating the next day, you, know, you, you don't have a roof over your head, you know, those people, their you know, goal in life is just to survive. But for average people like us, every one of us, we live our lives really with that hidden desire to live a mark. And for some of us, we're even willing to go to the, to the side of even causing harm, causing destruction. You know, that's why people make viruses. That's why people spend hundreds of hours behind computer, risking jail time, risking fine, and trying to hack into a government website. Because they have that innate desire. Some of us, we're even, willing, we're even willing to leave our mark. You know, causing, you know, doing vandalism, you know, defaming property. I remember when I was in America, you know, it was during the uh, building boom, and there was new community everywhere popping up. And, you know, for me, my hobby is I really like to go to those model homes and, and look around. You know, I can't afford it, but I just enjoy seeing nice house. I really do for some reason. I remember I would often visit and there was a community, new community near where I was living. And they were building up the houses and, and I remember I was walking that one day and in the, during the day I was driving by and these people, construction people, they were laying out the sidewalk. 
they're putting the you know, clean concrete, you know, making the sidewalk really nice and clean and even and pretty. Well, that evening I went to, you know, I, went, I wanted to take a walk and I was walking around and I was walking by and I, I was seeing, I was watching the sidewalk that they had paved just a just few hours ago. And as I was walking along, guess what I see? Guess what I discover? Toward the end of the sidewalk, on the sidewalk, I see a handprint. <laughs> and below it, an initial. I, I forget the initial. KT was here. I couldn't believe my eyes that within the matter of just two or three hours between the construction workers left and when I came, within those two or three hours, some, I'm assuming, some kid came by and put their hands in there and destroyed this beautiful, clean, neat sidewalk with their handprint and their initial. Why? They wanted to leave their mark. Some of us, we leave our mark by doing crazy things. We don't think about it, but that's what we're trying to do. With the crazy things like climbing walls, jumping off tall buildings, you know, committing crimes. Because we want to be noticed. We want to leave our mark. We feel like even if it's in a bad way, we want to be significant. But let me just say that if we truly want to leave a lasting mark, the best thing that we can do is to do things that last forever. See, this is again the irony of it all. So many people in this world, they go through extreme length trying to leave a mark. They train for years and years and years. Why? So they can run in a marathon and hopefully finish in the first place. A record where most people forget. A record that no one really cares. It doesn't last. We see people risking their lives, risking jail time, risking fine, hacking into computers, defaming property. Why? Because they believe that the mark, the vandalism, the, the spray can, the initial that they left on a clean white wall, somehow that will leave a mark of their life. And the sad thing is, somebody will paint over that and someone else will do that. If no one does it, eventually the walls will come, crumble and it will disappear. The irony of all the actions, all the things that we do, is that most of the things that we do will not last. It will rust. It will fall. It will be erased. And it will disappear. That's why in this passage, Jesus said, what is the point? Why are so many people wasting their life, wasting their time, trying to leave a mark, a mark that will not last? Why not use your head? Why not think? If you truly want to leave a mark, and that is a good thing, if you truly want to leave a mark, why don't you leave a mark that lasts? But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. Store up for yourself a treasure in heaven where you will not rust and destroy, where no one can break in and where no one can steal. The Bible tells us that the only thing that lasts forever are human souls. The only thing that lasts forever are our souls. You know, in my life, I've seen and done and accomplished many things. I am not an old man, but I'm not a young man. And in my life, I've done some things that, you know, most people would be envious of. In my life, I've met several celebrities, not really our friends, but I've met several, 
singers, actors on the street. I've seen athletes, you know, in, a, in close proximity. In my life with God's self, I made it. I have a you know, college degree. I even have a graduate degree, master's degree. I know that that doesn't mean much here among all the permanent head damage people. In my life, I've saved enough money where actually, you know, it's, a, it's in the state of Texas. I actually own 50% of a house in Houston. In my life, I've actually been quoted and written about and actually even written articles on several newspapers. In my life, over the past 50, uh, in my life, I've been to over 15 countries, some places even like Afghanistan three times, a place where most people haven't been. So in my life, I've done and I've seen and accomplished many things that I'm proud of, many things that are difficult to achieve. But the thing that I'm most proud of is the number 200. Because the number 200 in my life signifies to me the number of people that I have baptized into faith. Over the past 16 years as a pastor, I have baptized close to 200 people into faith. And of all the accomplishments and of all the things that I've done, this is by far the mark that I'm most proud of. And the reason being is because these people that I have baptized into faith, I will see them again in heaven, in eternity. The home that I'm in the process of owning, over the years it will be destroyed. I will die and it will pass away. The college degree that I worked hard for, not in four years, actually it took me five years because I played a lot. No one cares. The master's degree that I really worked hard for, I'm proud of. I, I really am proud of. But it's something that no one really cares and everyone will eventually forget about. And the places that I've been to, I've been to England, Afghanistan, Turkey, Russia, China, Japan, Thailand, Honduras. I mean, I've been to many, many places and I'm really thankful for those opportunities. But who really cares? But the mark of 200, the people that I've led into faith, the people that I've led to life in eternity. You see, that is the mark that I'm most proud of. Because that is the mark that lasts forever. And the mark that we leave, the souls that we save, the great benefit is it doesn't just end with a person that we've influenced. Because the legacy will be carried on to their children and their children and their, and their children. And I can't think of a better way to leave my mark on this earth. Of all the things, 200, that is the mark that I'm proud of. And today I want to ask all of you, what is your mark? Is it 10? 15, 30? What is your mark? Let us pray.